Welcome to Seeking Alpha CEO Interviews. Quality of leadership is a decisive factor in stock performance, so we provide in-depth interviews with the best and brightest CEOs in the public markets. We publish limited excerpts from our interviews on social media platforms and the full interviews at SeekingAlpha.com and in the highly rated Seeking Alpha mobile app. To find the full interviews, open SeekingAlpha.com or the Seeking Alpha mobile app and search for the phrase CEO interviews or simply type a stock ticker into the search box. Atara, welcome to CEO Interviews. Welcome to Seeking Alpha. Really, really happy to have you on the show. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rina. Good to be here. It's great to have you. I'm excited to talk about a sector of the marketplace that we have not yet talked about. Um, so if you could catch viewers up on some Sarah luggage and where you play in, in the marketplace, um, and also maybe why or how you decided, because not only are you the CEO, but you're also a co-founder, um, how you decided to found the company. Yeah, okay, so that's a lot. Let's, that's a lot. Uh, it's a big start. start. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Samsara Luggage is a smart luggage company. Uh, we're, uh, we're new to the field, but the field is new. So we're one of the first <laughs> ones uh, out there. Uh, we launched our company four years ago. Um, and uh, it's uh, the, the idea, you know, the, the, the bigger idea is really to make travel easier, to make luggage something that is more relevant to these days where it could work with you, it could be IoT based, uh, and uh, we could utilize technology and design uh, in order to make a, a much better uh, experience uh, on the go. Uh, you know, we know from experience and from our personal stories how luggage is crucial and how much technology is crucial when you're traveling. It doesn't matter if it's for business or for personal uh, travel, but you all, the world today combines everything and you need to be uh, connected and you need to, you know, instead of having a box that packs your things, why not have a tool that could actually do much more for you? Mm -hmm. So, so that's uh, where we're coming from. From uh, this is how Samsara was launched. A little bit, uh, you know, it's kind of there. You said uh, you mentioned that I'm the co-founder, so I co-founded it uh, together with David, uh, who is my partner and life partner. Okay. Uh, the the company was born at home, actually. Um, I uh, I have a design company that works with young designers. Uh, you know, now I, of course, I, you know, it's just Samsara, but uh, but the the design company works with young designers. David comes from the tech industry, uh, entrepreneurial background, uh, travels a lot. He came back, uh, on, you know, from one of his uh, business travels, and he said my business trips, and said listen, I'm fed up, you know, I'm working for my luggage and why should I, you know, if you work for me, let's do something. Let's, you know, bring the design. You have uh, very talented people working with you. I'll bring the technology. We could do something interesting here. So at the beginning, it was kind of, uh, you know, we always have these ideas where we spin off to, to one another and uh, kind of, okay, yeah, this, 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 no. But in this case, we, it was actually something that, um, triggered uh, some more thought and, uh, and um, research. And we realized that this is an untapped market. When we started working on it, there was actually nothing out there in the market. Uh, there were a couple of uh, companies that just launched uh, their luggage a couple of months before we came out with it. So everyone was working on it on the same time, in the same time. It's, uh, I know that it's, a, it's something that happens. Uh, with many developments that there is the, the need and there is the way to resolve you know to, to give a, a good uh, a good uh, an interesting solution uh, and uh, we came in this uh, period of time and uh, this is how samsara was born it's really interesting i remember i grew up in chicago and we had family that was also in the luggage business plat luggage and i remember the first time they came out with something that you could put like a jack of your headphone 
in a slip of a pocket, like in the inside of the luggage. And I thought that was just like the coolest thing in the world. Right. But this is obviously taking that to a whole, you know, next level, you know, modern version of exactly what your husband said when he came home frustrated, which is, or your life partner, you know, came home frustrated and, and saying like, what can luggage do for us? And I feel like something else I'm learning and talking to all these CEOs on the show is understanding that this outdated notion of what innovation is, that it's not just for a tech in the tech industry, it's not just for the obvious applications of technology and innovation. But here's something that's a prime example of that, which is luggage completely refigured for for the modern traveler for modern society. It's interesting also that you launched kind of close to but before COVID and before travel was upended yet again. How mm -hmm. how has this year kind of um, I imagine on one hand, it's accelerated some growth because of all the kind of things that it's done to the travel industry and, and the need for innovation. And also the fact that when people are traveling now, you know, they're not sure when they're going to get back on a plane up until a few months ago and having to live out of their suitcase like that. Um, but also, I would imagine just because of the restrictions on travel and, and the quarantines and the lockdowns, um, you know, it because how it upended travel that affects it in, in it in another way. So talk to us about how these past this past year and a half uh, has been for for the industry at large and also for samsara. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's been a challenge. Uh, challenges have never been uh, an obstacle, you know, we like to look at them and see we okay, what can we do? Uh, how can we make something better uh, with this challenge? Uh, so we also we also did this uh, throughout uh, the past uh, year plus. Um, we actually, just before COVID, we introduced our next gen luggage to the market at uh, CES in Las Vegas in January, 2020. Uh, so, and the plan was to, so, you know, we, we already introduced uh, the, the, the collection and the new technology. Uh, it was uh, it was very nicely received, uh, got very nice uh, press, uh, interest, uh, uh, discussions with uh, companies that have to do with the travel industry that were very interested in implementing uh, uh, the technology uh, with what they can offer. Um, and uh, everything, of course, was postponed uh, due to COVID, you know, so that was the first decision. Uh, and an important one to say, okay, you know, we, we had a plan, but we have to now change it and wait to the right time. Uh, and now we're, of course, uh, we uh, we grouped uh, for, for uh, getting uh, the product out uh, within a few months. Uh, we, of course, needed uh, uh, to wait with some of the working on regulations and things like that, because some of the, um, uh, the technology has changed uh, over the past uh, year plus. So, you know, even if you change a chip or something, you, you need to uh, restructure all of that. So we're there now. Um, besides that, which was, uh, you know, the, the, the big strategic uh, shift, we decided uh, very fast to, to, to act and to make sure that we have some relevant products uh, for the uh, travel that is uh, happening in this very new and weird uh, era that uh, no one expected. So the first thing that we did is uh, uh, pretty much at the beginning of COVID, uh, uh, around at the end of March, we already launched uh, something that is called the Essentials Kit. Uh, it was just a travel kit for, we thought, for people who need uh, to, to take, you know, some, some, you know, if they are taking a plane or, a, or, or, you know, plane, a train, whatever it is, a road trip, they'll need something with them that has the essentials that you need for COVID, which is a mask, a sanitizer, uh, alcohol wipes, uh, things, uh, gloves, you know, whatever we needed then. So we, we created something like this. It was very convenient and travel size and, uh, and relevant to what was needed then. But what happened is that people also, they didn't need it only for travel. They needed it just for, you know, going grocery shopping. Yeah. So, so this became uh, actually in an unplanned way, a very uh, big, uh, you know, it brought us a big boost in sales. The, uh, beginning at the first quarter of uh, uh, 
uh, at the second quarter uh, of uh, 2020. Um, later on, we continued with another product that is called the Nano Bag, uh, which is uh, an overnighter bag that is treated with smart, uh, uh, smart uh, material. Uh, so it has like nano coating on it that uh, is a bacteriostatic uh, coating that uh, doesn't enable uh, any droplets or bacteria to develop on this fabric. So this was also, you know, an important product. It's always good to have something like that. You know, we, I think that COVID also uh, brought to our understanding that uh, actually everything that you bring from the outside, you usually when you unpack, you go to your hotel room or you get back home, you put it on your bed. And so, so you kind of bring everything from the outside into your most clean and uh, safe space. Mm -hmm. so, so I think we, we understood these things and, and we're implementing them. Um, and uh, the last thing that we did uh, was um, something interesting, interesting that had to do with our direct-to-consumer approach. Uh, we're a D2C company. We sell online only. Uh, and uh, we didn't want to lose any of our abilities in that field. And on the contrary, actually uh, utilize this uh, period of time to gain more assets that are digital assets uh, for cheaper uh, and for, and, and to, and mainly to be out there, to be relevant for our pixels to work, for our, uh, our, our marketing essential uh, assets to work and grow. And uh, what we did is we, uh, besides our uh, Samsara luggage uh, sales and, and website, uh, sales uh, website, we opened an additional website, which is uh, a fashion uh, cluster. It's uh, something different it's called Sarah and Sam. And uh, there we, we started at uh, late October, 2020. Um, and uh, this was something that uh, proved that we could actually be very agile, uh, shift a little bit, have our team work on other things, and uh, be ready for when travel goes back and uh, we're ready with uh, bigger uh, sales uh, with all of our digital assets. And meanwhile, of course, generate revenue for the company. And this is very important for a public company, of course. So talk to us a little bit about that kind of process because I you know coming off the CES you know there was a lot of positive press I imagine that's a huge I mean for so many people there was this huge disappointment for anybody that had something coming up right when COVID hit and obviously there's a huge disappointment but a there's the disappointment but then there's the pivoting to okay how do we innovate for this reality is that a meeting of the minds is that an entrepreneurial spirit is that bringing on part of the tech team. I'm curious, A, the, the makeup of your team a little bit, like how much tech is involved, how much design, how much research, and then how much of the management style is having to kind of, you know, lead people through this or how much of that is the team. Uh, talk to us ab about that process. I think it's a combination. And because our management style from day one was uh, very, um, adaptive uh, understanding that we need to learn the market and uh, respond uh, while we're learning. I'll give you an example. We launched our product uh, at the beginning, uh, almost four years ago, uh, on Kickstarter, uh, then later on in, on Indiegogo. Uh, and so we decided that the best way for us uh, to understand if our product is relevant to the market is to actually test it uh, with that platform. It's also, of course, good for uh, uh, for revenue uh, that uh, could uh, enable us to to get the products out to the market. But there are other ways to do it. You know, you, you can bring in an additional investment. Uh, there, there are other ways. But we, from day one, we wanted to be connected with the actual uh, reactions of the market and the needs of the market uh, because we were tapping into something that did not exist before that. So I think that's kind of the DNA of the company. Uh, so it, it comes from us, uh, the, the entrepreneurs, then the management team, and then everyone that comes on board. Uh, we work 
uh, very in a in a very flexible way where we have a few uh, employees uh, that uh, have been with us uh, uh, since the beginning and are doing the essential work of the company and then we have teams you know we have a team for tech when we are in the midst of developing uh, something new with the technology so we'll have a team working a team that works with the company uh, but it's it's a team that's relevant for this uh, specific uh, project and then you know we'll, we'll go on we have design we actually do have inside uh, in-house uh, we, we believe that uh, uh, that is because it's it's a it's a product and there's product design so so here, uh, there is something that, uh, that we needed uh, to, to kind of make sure that uh, that has the DNA that comes from the company and not from something that is external. Uh, but, but, but really, the, the idea is that also the people that we choose to work with us are, are very innovative. We, we allow a lot of creativity, a lot of... Uh, um, a lot of the the ideas uh, come from our team, and you know they help us adapt to to the changing uh, times and needs. And was that something that you and David talked about as you were founding the company, how you wanted it to look? Because an innovative company, you know, um, it, it can look kind of a number of ways. But I think it, in these modern times, like what you're describing, is kind of a modern take. On a, on a modernly innovative company. Is that something that you set out to do at the outset? And also, how did, how did if at all, going public, did it affect any of those kinds of um, how you lead or how the team is, is structured at all? We, we both are people that work like that. We're very entrepreneurial, very um, adaptive uh, to, to the change of times. And, and we like to, to think, uh, you know, ahead and, uh, and and to, you know, if there's something that we would think of and then uh, there is some kind of shift, that's, that's who we are just as, as people. And we definitely bring this into our business perspective. Um, saying that going public is uh, on one hand, uh, something that is different, you know, that the company is, is, is not only ours now, it, we are a part of it, but it belongs to the public. And we, we have a big responsibility here uh, to, to deliver and to, to do what is best for the company and, uh, you know, to, to find the right way. Uh, but I think that it works together. Uh, you know, we have proven that it succeeds. Uh, we actually, uh, last week, uh, we presented our, uh, our quarterly rep reports for the uh, first, first quarter of uh, 2021. And we demonstrated a very big increase in sales in comparison to the first quarter of 2020. And that's due to uh, these measures that we took uh, that I spoke about, spoke about before. So I think it works for the benefit uh, of, of the, the company uh, and, and, uh, and for the, the, the public uh, aspect of it. I'll just say that uh, starting actually on crowdfunding, uh, later on we even did uh, 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 equity crowdfunding uh, with Start Engine. Uh, that actually prepared us uh, to, to work as a public company, even that we weren't at the beginning, but it's, it's something that is very transparent. Everything is out there. Everything about the company, about the product, about the patents, about uh, the finances, they're just there on the dashboards. You know, everything is out there and very clear. And uh, so, I think from day one, this was the way that we acted transparently and uh, very agile to, to the situation. And in terms of you mentioned the patents and the technology, what are some of the things that you're looking to develop or innovations that you're looking to take on? And how do you know kind of what to patent off of that? Right. So. What we're planning with our next gen, uh, the, the one that was introduced uh, at CS and uh, will go to the market soon, 
Uh, that is something uh, very unique and that does not exist uh, in the uh, space of uh, luggage uh, at this point of time. Um, it's, uh, we're talking about using a technology that has not been used in luggage before and, uh, and bringing it in, into this world. Uh, what we'll be offering is uh, to have for now our current uh, line of luggage uh, that has been chosen as best smart luggage over the past three years uh, by very prestige uh, publications, including Forbes magazine. Uh, so after that, uh, that was based on Bluetooth technology and uh, you know, it, it gives you alerts in the space that is uh, close to you. Uh, now we're going for something that uh, gives you uh, alerts uh, wherever you are and uh, enables you to have a hotspot uh, and uh, so, so you are connected wherever you are in the world uh, with this simple device uh, that we're offering. So that is uh, kind of the, the, new, the new tech that we're, we're going to. Uh, it's based on uh, SIM. So um, the, the GPS tracker will enable you to know if you're in, uh, you know, you landed in New York and accidentally your luggage got to London, uh, you will know exactly where it is and it will make it easier for you to find it. Uh, if you're in sitting in a meeting room, uh, one side of town, and then your hotel is in the other side of town and your suitcase was opened, you'll get an alert to your phone, to your app, saying your suitcase was open now. So it, it enables you to be in control of, uh, of what is happening. It uh, also uh, provides, you know, the ergonomic uh, design of the suitcase has a flat top. So you can actually, uh, you know, while you're on the go, and I think now after COVID, it's uh, even uh, more uh, useful because people are using, you know, are, are looking for, to create their own travel bubble and not to use shares, shared spaces, uh, you know, not as much as we used to. Uh, so you can create your own travel bubble where on one hand, you put your laptop or devices on the suitcase, charge them, uh, you can charge your, your phone wirelessly, your laptop uh, with the USB-C. And um, uh, on, on that note, you can also uh, receive uh, your own internet with the, with the hotspot that we're providing. So, so you have, you know, and, and the reason being is, A, we give it for a cheaper price, B, it's international wherever you are, uh, you know, it just connects. Uh, it's not, it's, there's no big deal. There's no searching. You, you don't need to do any special plans uh, or, or pay uh, crazy amounts. And there's also the aspect of uh, cybercrime. And cybercrime happens quite a lot and there have been uh, many um, uh, uh, there's a lot of data that was collected uh, over the past couple of years. Airports are very insecure uh, in that aspect. So if you have your own travel bubble that provides you everything, so you can just travel, work on the go, do whatever you need, you know, you can work, you can post, you can, you can do whatever you, you used to be doing on your safe terms uh, that are safe, uh, you know, without touching anything mm -hmm. else and without using any other services that might not be as safe as yours. And are all those technologies that you mentioned, those are all patented by, by you? It's, no, they're, they're existing technologies. We didn't invent the GPS or- uh, Well, no, but like the, applica the, the application for it. Right, so a part of it is patented, the design, the way it's combined together. But the, uh, the, te the technologies inside the smart uh, unit are not, uh, you know, each one of them has an own pa patent of their own. Got it. Uh, but uh, we're kind of utilizing them and we patented everything we could uh, with this combination. Got you. And in terms of, you know, speaking about how things are opening up and, and adapting to these new realities, how much do you think about parts of the world or... Um, you know, that aren't opening up right now or the world going back and reverting back if, you know, if things don't go well, although it seems like it's going in a good direction with the vaccines. 
who are we to know we're only human as, as we've learned this year? Um, how, how much time do you spend thinking about that and kind of planning for that? So we were very careful uh, with the timing of deciding that we're going back to uh, ma manufacturing uh, the next gen of luggage. Uh, we were very cautious. We of course waited uh, to see that the vaccines are getting out there and uh, gradually, not in all countries unfortunately, but gradually uh, growing. Um, and uh, we feel confident enough, you know, after we've seen uh, some success stories in the world uh, with the vaccines uh, and we see what's happening in the States, of course, uh, we're, we feel confident enough to, uh, to go back to our original plan. Uh, we adapted all our business plans and models uh, to be relevant to what is happening now and to work in the right pace that we think should be right. We, we, we're quite certain that things as they seem will not, it's not that everything will open in one day and uh, the world will, you know, from A go to Z, it doesn't happen, we, we've learned that. But uh, uh, we do see a very positive, gradual, uh, change. Uh, we're talking about the new normal and we're trying to adapt to this new normal. I think it will take time. And I can tell you that also from uh, being, you know, I, I spent uh, quite a lot of trips also to, to the Far East, uh, you know, and naturally some of the production uh, is related uh, to, to these countries. And uh, because of what they've experienced in the past uh, with the SARS, uh, they, you know, have their normal for quite a lot of years already with mm -hmm. uh, checking temperature when you land, uh, people going with masks before COVID, of course. So yeah. uh, I, I think that uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably be seeing this also in this new normal of, uh, of our world. And uh, things will be a little different, but uh, people will gradually go back to traveling. And we can see this, this uh, the data that is, uh, that is uh, out there now, you know, by, uh, tra by uh, airlines and um, statistics that we can see are showing that there is a gradual growth there. So... Yeah. You're hoping for the best. Yes, I think we all are. All hoping for the best and all hoping that we're all able to adapt. <laughs> not just not just company wide, but but personally. Yes. It's yeah. it's definitely a new a new normal that we're all approaching. Um so on the financial side of things, sw switching things a little bit, you had a recent stock split um that you announced. Talk to us about that and how you view that as as CEO and what you're looking to accomplish there and if you feel like it's been accomplished. Right. So, yeah, it's been uh, two months uh, since we uh, conducted the reverse split. Um, it's been something that's uh, been out there as an idea uh, since we went public. Um, there have been many reasons uh, why to do it and many reasons why to wait. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, we've, of course, been consulting with, uh, with professionals and with uh, the people that that are guiding us and, and giving us the, the uh, relevant uh, financial uh, backing. Um, we realized that uh, the time that we did it was a good time uh, to go ahead with this move uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, to, to give our investors the ability to go and trade. Uh, you know, the, the volumes were quite low when the stock price was so low. So we needed to do this big move in order to uh, benefit with, with anyone who had uh, some SARS stock and um, some SARS leverage, of course. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, we really wanted to wait for the right time uh, that is relevant for what we discussed previously, and that's the, the market starting to look more positive. There was no, uh, it, it didn't make any sense to do it at the beginning of COVID, but uh, this time felt like it would be the right uh, move uh, in the benefit of all of the shareholders you feel like it'll be less dilutive, the fact that you're doing it at this time. 
Yeah, we can already see uh, quite a significant uh, volume of trading uh, recently. So, you know, it's kind of, it's been, uh, it's been two months of stabilizing this process, you know, so going uh, down, then uh, going up, and, and it seems as if we're, we're getting to a nice and stable uh, position where people can actually trade this and, uh, and uh, do, you know, uh, be a part of uh, trading some Sara luggage. And are there certain markers that you're looking for in terms of the process of, of stabilizing that in, in terms of the share price? Or is it kind of an eventual balancing out that you're looking for? Our belief from day one has always been and will always be that uh, the value of the company has to do with the company's performance. And uh, I'm not talking about the performance uh, uh, that has to do with anything that is, uh, art, that is not um, organic. Right. If we show good progress sales, uh, we, we, we continue with our plan and bring uh, achievements that are uh, business achievements, it will affect positively the, the stock price. So we're, we're very um, targeted uh, to continue with our plan to gain profit to the company that will enable the investors to enjoy a higher uh, stock price. And, and uh, of course, down the road, uh, go uh, higher to New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you think about in terms of uplisting and, 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 yes. and uh, yeah. And that's just getting the financial house in order. What does it take in, in terms of uplisting? It, it, uh, it, needs, uh, it needs some uh, time and maturity. There are some criteria, and we're building them over time. And, uh, uh, and we have, uh, uh, partners that are uh, financial partners that are working with us on that. Got you. So in terms of growing, like in, you know, you, you, you're speaking about the maturation of the company, but also as you look out in terms of building the innovation, building the tech, what are you looking? And, and as you mentioned, you know, on the recent earnings, you guys had this, you know, um, high, high revenue growth that I think proves out the thesis that you're building. And as you're talking about, bringing the, the new products to market. I would imagine that's one of the ways that you're looking to do that. But what are some of the things that you're looking to bring to market over the next 12 to 18 months to continue this maturation process and also building out of the innovative products? So, so the, the most important thing is the new line of products with the new technology. That's where we're focusing all our energy in. Uh, and uh, so, so it's on one hand to bring it out to the market, and on the other hand, work on all the infrastructure that enables us to uh, generate you know, products, sales, and uh, the fulfillment uh, process. Uh, so it's uh, it's kind of it's a, it's a lot of work, a lot of teams involved here, a lot of uh, different uh, locations, a lot of logistics, and a lot of uh, sales work. Uh, that is done online. Uh, so we, we are geared into doing all of this, uh, bringing uh, some more assets uh, to, to the company that are uh, brand ambassadors and uh, partners uh, that will uh, be part of, uh, of getting the, the product out there. Um, th this, is, this is the big plan. So to end the conversation, I'm curious, as, as you've come on board as CEO and developed a, a public company and, and grown into the role, what's something that's either surprised you about being CEO or what's something that you feel like you've even doubled down, you, you, you feel like it's even more important than, than you thought it, it would be? Wow. Um, <laughs> listen, I think that, uh, being a CEO of a company uh, through its launch and through um, its <laughs> the, the recent uh, year of development um, has taught me a lot. Um, I think that the actually, if, if I take a point of time where, where things have changed dramatically, it's when we launched the, the product, uh, the, the Kickstarter that we started. 
So overnight from an idea that we're working on with our teams and uh, internally, suddenly it's out there uh, on, on speeds, uh, you know, the organic um, press and uh, uh, it, it was just, yeah, it was just, uh, it was just crazy. It was, uh, it, it was really, uh, there, there were a few milestones uh, that happened uh, through this campaign. Uh, one of them, by the way, was uh, uh, a piece that, that uh, was on the verge. Um, and uh, made a very, very uh, big difference for the company because uh, suddenly it's, uh, it's, the, it's what everyone is talking about, looking uh, to, to understand. Uh, and it, it bought, I think it brought smart luggage uh, to a different uh, level of attention. Uh, so as a CEO, I, I think this is something that, uh, that was... I needed uh, to to learn to adapt to this very uh, fast uh, shift, and since then, that's what's been happening. Uh, you know, I, I did in the past. I, I used to work in uh, television news, so I know what fast speed is. But uh, this was uh, really, you know, multiplied <laughs> multiplied by a thousand, and yeah. uh, that's about it. What you used to do for television news? I was a silent editor. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> was that was that what you were doing before Samsara? No, no. Okay. Uh, that was the beginning of my career. Uh, and then uh, I went uh, to uh, more uh, um, business uh, oriented. Uh, I was uh, a director of a fund, and uh, later on, uh, director of development of uh, College of in Engineering and Design. So this actually That's where you got into uh, this is design. very relevant to my next phase. You know, I realized that there's a need there. Uh, you know, and very talented uh, young people that uh, could bring uh, big value uh, to to the world, and uh, we can help them uh, create something nice together. Very cool. Well, let me end on that just because you just released kind of a very interesting background. And I would imagine, do you think the thing that 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 um, is the, the commonality between kind of pursuing different things, would you say you like a natural curiosity that leads you from from one thing to the next? Uh, probably. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> You know, my son, uh, uh, whenever he asks me, you know, what's the most important thing, uh, you know, for him uh, to, to learn or to, my, my word, my, my word, the word that I use is, you know, curiosity. Or yeah. anyway. <laughs> curiosity or what? Curiosity will get you anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First yeah. of all, I love yeah. that your son asked you that. That's very sweet. That's yeah. very cool. Um, well, Atara, this has been a pleasure. I really appreciate you catching us up on life in general a little bit, on, on the smart luggage sector, on Samsara, and, and what you have coming up, what you have, what we have to look forward to. Um, this has been very uh, edifying, and I, I think for curious people, a, a new a new sector to think about. But thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.